Well, good morning. Uh, this morning we have the opportunity to share bread and wine together in communion, the Lord's Supper. At least I'm going to call it bread and wine. Uh, but of course these are symbols, so if you don't have wine or you prefer not to use wine, or if you don't have bread, uh, these are strange times. It's hard to get to get hold of some of the things we take for granted most of the time. So do find the nearest thing that you have and God is big enough to deal with that. He understands. The important thing is that we remember Christ's sacrifice and that we honour him together. The very word communion means being together with one another, doesn't it? It's another one of those moments where we'll be keenly aware that although we're still church, the body of Christ, we're not gathered physically in one room, but we're scattered around Corsham and Rudlow, Chippenham and further afield. But we are united in one faith. And through technology, we're able to share in this time with gratitude that through God's goodness, we're able to come together to remember Christ's great sacrifice that made our unity that transcends bricks and mortar, our unity in him, possible. Now, some joining in this morning may have helped serve communion before. For others, this may be the first time you've done more than accept the bread and wine as part of a communion service. For others still, you may never have shared the bread and wine at communion. The first thing that we should always do as we prepare for communion is to examine our hearts. Should I be taking communion? Well, here are the important questions to ask yourself. Do you believe that Jesus died to save you from your sins? And have you accepted that gift for yourself? Are you trusting in him as your Lord and Master? And choosing to turn away from your sins to follow Jesus? If the answer to those questions is no, then let me encourage you, instead of sharing in the bread and wine and making commitments that, that you don't feel able to commit to, use this time to pray and ask Jesus to show himself to you. If the answer to those questions though is yes, then no matter how small your faith may feel, no matter how weak you may feel this morning, no matter how well you feel like you're coping, or how unworthy you may feel of Jesus' blessing, Jesus invites you to join with him around the, his table, to share in these symbols of his body and his blood. So let's do that with respect, with humility and with love. I'll lead us in a prayer of confession, an opportunity to come before Jesus and ask for his forgiveness for our sins. So let's pray. Lord, for all the things we've thought and said and done and ignored and neglected to do, all the people we've got angry with or resented for all the times we've sinned against you, we are sorry. Forgive us through your Son, Jesus Christ, and grant us wisdom, strength, courage, and every resource we need to turn away from those sins and live lives that reflect you more truly. And for your glory we pray. Amen. Let's read again those words from Scripture which are so familiar to us that tell us of that time when Jesus commanded his disciples to, to gather and to, to remember his sacrifice through bread and wine. I'm going to read those familiar words from 1 Corinthians 11, but I'm going to read them from the contemporary English version of the Bible, so you may notice that the words are slightly different. I've already told you what the Lord Jesus did on the night that he was betrayed, and it came from the Lord himself. He took some bread in his hands, then after he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Eat this and remember me. After the meal, Jesus took a cup of wine in his hands and said, This is my blood. And with it, God makes his new agreement with you. Drink this 
and remember me. The Lord meant that when you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you tell about his death until he comes. So let's do that same thing that Jesus did. Let's pause and let's give thanks for these symbols of bread, of Jesus' body and his blood. Dear Lord, we thank you that we aren't performing a sacrifice this morning. Jesus isn't on an altar before us. His sacrifice is already complete. No further sacrifice is necessary. His death is died. His victory won. He has risen again. And so we remember, we remember that once for all sacrifice. And we give thanks for these symbols of that sacrifice. Bread for your body that was broken. Wine for your blood that was shed. We give you thanks for the new covenant promise that was sealed by your blood as you died for our sakes on the cross. We give you thanks. Amen. So, let me encourage you to take this bread, the symbol of Jesus' body which was broken for you, and to eat it. And we'll just pause for a moment to give people opportunity to do that. Now we take the wine and we give thanks that Christ was willing to shed his blood for our sake, his life poured out. And we drink it now together as a sign of our unity in Christ. Let's pray, shall we? Dear Lord, help us to remember your sacrifice on the cross, not just this morning, but each and every day. Not just when we're at church, but in every moment as we live as your children. Help us to live out lives of open discipleship in our homes, and with everyone that we get in touch with through whatever means we use. Help us to live not just in memory of what has been done, but in the sure and certain hope of eternal life 
made open to us through Christ's sacrifice on the cross. We remember and we give you thanks. And so for your glory we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.